Hello, today we are going to try to get uh, EEPROM programmer going a vintage uh, data IO 29B uh, used to program the old PROMs and EEPROMs that you find in all computers and arcade games. Okay, but I think I'm repaired and I am ready to burn EEPROMs for real. Now it's time to connect the uh, data I.O. to an old computer, uh, but before I do that I need to make a cable. So I made a cable and I have a nice tester and it's 2 to 2, 3 to 3, 4 to 8, and 4 Wait, that's not all. Uh, you have to make sure uh, the pot in here is on 14. That's 9600 bar. One more setting down there in the guts of the machine. Um, that's uh, the parity. So this is parity off. Which and now it's time to do what I wanted to do in the first place, which is to burn the vintage prom uh, to get the software loaded. It's called Program Link. Prom Link, sorry. PL. And it's my, in my good old uh, Dolch computer, which runs DOS. And the first thing you have to do is uh, tell it which programmer you use. Uh, and in my case, a 29B unit pack. And make sure your programmer port is at the right rate. And then uh, you go over setup, select the device. And uh, mine is actually an, uh, an ST Micro 2764, but it turns out it's, it's pin compatible with an Intel. Intel, where are you? Intel, the inventors of the EEPROM. This one, 64A. There you go. We do OK. You want to load RAM. Uh, from file and uh, unable to contact the programmer ah yes another thing that you have to do right is you have to get that one in remote mode so you want select F1 start and start there you go now it's happy over here could talk to it and I choose absolute binary. Be careful, there are two binaries. There is this binary, don't use it. That's for uh, tape, uh, paper tape. You want the absolute binary, uh, which has just the content of the ROM. And now it finally gets it to there, and it's happy, and the little wheel is turning. Okay, and now it's pretty easy, much easier on, on, on the keyboard. You do program, and if you do process devices, it will do a blank check and a little bit, bit check, program verify, sorry, program and verify. So here we go. Let's see what happens. Let's start it and see if I repaired my machine properly. And uh, actually, there's nothing much uh, in terms of progress here, it doesn't tell you much. Uh, so, you just wait until that uh, little wheel stops spinning and uh, hope for no programming errors I had as I had before as my hardware was bad. Pass! Yay! So now it works. So let's try it in the HP 45. So it turns out that the HP 85 has a programmable ROM module in which you can insert your own and uh, this one has some other module that I don't want. One is a custom one and one is I think the EMS ROM. So I almost forgot and uh, this device are of course UV erasable uh, so uh, they get erased with light 
and you don't want that to happen so you want to cover them up with some in the 3D blocks to light. So all we need to do is insert it in its socket in the right direction and there's always a whole bunch of little jumpers when you do ROM work. And this is no exception, I have to set the ROM number, this one has, has, happens to be two. So here I'm on the HP 85, it's all fresh from there price at uh, the Vintage Computer Forum. So let's see if the uh, service from the module with the prom that we just burned works. So the idea is that when you have that one inserted, it should throw the computer into the service mode. And there you go, service ROM, and uh, I know E is a beeper test. And I think F is the screen. So there you go, very helpful to have a PROM burner. Uh, you can do all kind of things. Of course you will get by with the HP85 without a PROM programmer, but on uh, old machines that are microprogrammed, uh, they just live on uh, a fast bipolar prom that no, no modern programmer will work with anymore. Uh, and I'm thinking, of course, of the Alto, uh, which is why I wanted to have the uh, Data IO programmer ready. Uh, it might become very helpful. We'll see.